What is up everyone, Genix is here, and welcome back to Sunrider Liberation Day, Captain's Edition, Return! Oh boy, but yes, we're back in return, and now we're going to do another girl's story. Who will we do today? I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out. Okay, I'm about to say where's the save. There it is. So, as we know, we've done Asuka and Ava, so all that's left is Sola and Akari. And you know, I've been thinking, and I saw someone suggest it. So there's like some conflicting, some people say cards and so that, you know, but I think, I think what we should do is end it how we ended Sunrider Academy, with Sola being the last girl because the best is always safe for less. You guys know what I'm saying? Anyway, even though Akari is my girl, you, we all know that Sola is top tier, but anyways, god damn it. Um, um, I'm trying to think if like, um, I should do like differently and see if I could get different outcomes because you know I'm gonna do a whole big video to get everyone's bad ending and things like that but I want to see if I can like do some random things in order to see what happens you know we'll make saves just in case I die because we can get some of the bad endings out of the way just in case I make dumb decisions but let's try Ikari this time around and let's do some different options and see what the hell happens um when I think of covert operations, the first person who comes to mind is Akari. Yeah. Uh, not only that, but she's the ship's chief of security. Exactly the kind of expertise we'll need in a situation like this. We're going to recruit Akari. We'll need her technical know-how to figure out how to stop the massacre. Okay, Captain. Come on, she's probably in the mess hall right now. Oh boy. T minus 63 hours until the Liberation Day Massacre, 27 hours until Chagar enters the mind stream. Yep. Oh boy. Oh, hi, Kriska. I guess you're just gonna join us on Akari's adventure because we can't get you for some reason. I don't know. Anyways, I mean, I'd like to, but I guess the game just said no. Ah. Sure enough, Shields found Akari chatting with Kriska in the mess hall as soon as he entered. What? Ah, the lieutenant, too, huh? I, I forgot, I gotta give Kato a kind of higher voice because his voice is apparently not the deep and robust as mine. But anyways, he pondered whether to bring Kriska into the plot as well. We're trying to prevent the assassination of the Alliance military leaders, so Kriska would be more than eager to help out. But on the flip side, I can't risk the lieutenant leaking word of the plot to the Alliance command either. That would be the first thing a dutiful soldier like her would do, and that'll cause complications for me. Since she, since then, um, they'll, yeah, since then they'll then, wait, whoa, that sounds weird, since then they'll then expect to coordinate a counter-intelligence operation to thwart the assassination with the real Kato shield instantly blowing my cover. For a moment, Shields weighed the whether he should bring the Alliance into their effort to stop the massacre, but ultimately decided against it. No, the Alliance won't be able to move fast enough, and once the truth comes out that I'm not the real Kato Shield, I'll be finished. I'll have to stake my chances on a small covert op. Looks like it'll have to be just Akari. Shields casually walked over to the pair. Well, well, chatting together again so soon. <laughs> What's your problem, Cap? Soldier Boy here just telling me some stories. <laughs> Got any interesting ones yourself? He leaned in close to Akari and whispered into her ear. Sorry to cut your date short, but I need your help. Date? It's not like I am. God damn it, Akari. <clears throat> Lieutenant, I must speak with uh, to my chief security about private matters. Sorry for interrupting your discussion. Not at all, sir. Chris could begin... Chris could begin the perfect... Oh, being, my god, sorry, I'm tired. Yeah, it's just Kriska being the perfect soldier. <laughs> she was, uh, she stood upright without hesitation and walked out of the mess hall. Captain, talk to, uh, talk to you later, mercenary. Oi, what's this, uh, what was that about? Is something going on? She always took a seat next to Bakari and leaned into her ear so they could speak in whispers. We've got a problem. It threatens the security of the ship. No, more like the security of the entire galaxy. The Doc and I have discovered our chief engineer is a prototype. Oh, oi! Are you for real? I thought those tests came back negative! Sorry, that was just a lie we made to make the prototypes think we still got us fooled. 
In reality, Chigar is a spy who's been programmed to assassinate every Alliance military leader gathered in the Victory Hall, or Victory Celebration, if we successfully liberate Zara. Kind of like a prototype's insurance policy. We've got three days to stop her before it's too late. Holy damn. Uh, are you alright? Uh, I know you were going through some times, right? And Chigar was always the one rooting one. Uh, you on, but for her to turn on you like that, damn, you must be wrecked. Don't worry about me. All right, just uh, hang in there, Captain. We'll get through this together. I can't believe her first concern after hearing that is me. I guess Shigar is really an old softy after all. In about 20 hours, Shigar will enter the prototype's mind stream during the Battle of Sarah. While Shigar is inside the mind stream, the prototype's leader will embed her own consciousness inside Shigar and then assume control of Shigar in order to carry out mass, the mass assassination. We have to detain Shigar before that so she never enters the mind stream. Hey, this isn't making any sense here. How do you even know all this? You're pretty much talking as uh, to me as if you've seen the future or something. Come on, there's something you're not telling me, isn't there? As expected of Akari, it looks like her experience as a mercenary wasn't for nothing. I mean, you are saying this as if you know it's going to happen, so... You know, it, it's not that hard to see. I mean, oh god, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah. Alright. You're gonna have a tough time believing me. But I really am from the future. Everything I just told you, I've experienced firsthand. Chigar will enter the mind stream in about 20 hours, and she will be mind controlled by the leader of the prototype, and she really will assassinate the Alliance top military leaders. <laughs> oh man, you really had me going there, Captain. You almost convinced me that poor Chigar was really gonna backstab us all. Jeez, and I even felt sorry for you and all. Kari's grin slowly drained from her face when she saw the light fade from Shield's eyes. <laughs> Holy shit. Ikari sat wordlessly, the full gravity of the situation now crushing down on her chest. You really are serious. You, uh, can I explain to me just how you traveled back in time to tell me that all this? Shields pointed to Claude sitting across the table. She waved back. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ikari grabbed him by the shoulders and stared into his face. Are you serious? He nodded. I always knew Boob Rock is suspicious, but I never would have imagined she was a time traveler. Ah oh, man, suddenly I'm getting the feeling that this was all a weird dream and I'm just about to wake up. Wouldn't that be a thing? I don't suppose you know how Poobrock is traveling through time. She's a god. You'd have to ask her because I'm not aware of the details myself. Okay? Kari drew a deep breath of air. Alright, Captain, I'm in. It's been a while since I've got a job this crazy, but uh... Don't worry, I've seen some pretty insane shit, so I'm not gonna back out now. I'm your girl for this, Captain. Nikari held out her hand, Shields took it. Pleasure hiring you, Mrs. Gold. I'm afraid I'm a man of modest means, so I'll be gentle on this man's life savings. <laughs> Captain, for you, I'll do this pro bono. Now come on, let's go nab our chief. Oh god! <laughs> Clacks, you got fucked, damn it! Yeah, before Kari could make another move, the klaxon sounded. Red Alert! The pack fleet has made its move! The hell, not now! Shit, change of plan, Captain. Looks like I gotta go. I expect the best from you out there, alright? Once we've whooped some pack ass, I'll come back and deal with the chief. Actually... Shit, no time to explain. Don't mention any of this to me during the battle. Of course, confidentially, uh, confidentiality and all. Now, gotta go. Ikari leaped over the table and sprinted toward the hangar. Captain, we better, uh, we best make ourselves scarce. Is this the same or? No, it's not. Uh, we best make ourselves scarce. The real you is supposed to be on the bridge. If you get discovered anywhere else during the battle. All right, let's go. Uh, this, yeah, this is the same. Uh, okay. 
He would always be able to see the phoenix on the battle map when things got too dicey. He would uh, be able to order her to turn around. But what would the Kato shields on the floor of the bridge do now? Did he care? Ah, uh, did he even care for her as he did? Uh, suddenly Ava's... Yeah, this should be insane. Okay, so this is where we're gonna start making different choices, because I'm curious. Will this lead me to a bad end, or... Because if I don't get caught on the camera, aren't I being, like, sneaky agent shit like Akari? Wouldn't she like that? But at the same time, I feel she would like if I saved the people as well. Like, I don't know, but yeah, let's make a new save here. Just in case I die. Or something happens, but don't blow your cover this time. Let's just hang back. New shit, guys. I still had my mission to prevent the massacre. I can't afford to blow my cover here. Shield shut the gate. Always on fire. We won't be going back out this way. Follow me! Claude led him further through the tunnel to another gate. Oh, this is new. The duo jumped off from the service tunnel into the auxiliary control center C. This is where redundant controls for most of Sunrider's offensive countermeasures were located. A grim sight awaited shields. Dead bodies of crewmen were scattered across the room while consoles and machinery hissed them. Um, steam. Oh god. The calm still echoed through the room. Um, this is Bridge requesting held, uh, held darts at coordinates 92, 19, 27. Stat, I repeat, this is Bridge requesting hell darts at coordinates 92, 19, 27. Auxiliary control, do you copy? Even if all he could do right now was hide, he could still do this. Shields ran over to the console and pounded the coordinates. What route of hell darts coming up? He pounded the fire button from here. He had no idea whether his actions even did anything. Did the hell darts hit? Were they all intercepted by enemy flak? Was the console even functional? His fist clenched without the battle map. He knew nothing. All this time, he had never realized how helpless most of the crew must feel during battle, just performing their roles completely blind to the overall tactical situation. Captain, we've got a new problem! Claude opened the door to the auxiliary control, revealing a gnarly sight. What? The bloody bodies of the crewmen were strewn throughout the hall. What in hells? These men weren't killed by explosions, they were gunned down. What could have... No, oh, this is still here. Shields received the answer to his question when a mechanized hunter drone rolled into view. Oh boy. Shit! He slammed the door shut behind him and threw himself and Claude onto the floor. Less than a moment later, the wall was punctured by a line of machine gun fire. Aren't your drones inside the ship? He had received some instructions about invasion drones during his training, but had figured they saw limited practical applications after never encountering one on the field. Indeed, this is the first time he had ever seen them deployed during ship-to-ship -ship operations. Shit, this just makes my life that much more complicated. Get back! Shields carried Claude back up and ran the opposite end of the room just as the drone fired anti-armor cannon into the door, blowing a hole through the wall large enough for the drone entered the auxiliary control room. The force of the explosions blew the duo off their feet, their eardrums ringing. C captain how how did that thing get here? Invasion drones. Some battleships fire torpedoes that drill through the hull of the ship, then drop hunter drones in to take over the ship from the inside. I, I never heard about this! Get down! The two clambered behind heavy consoles as the drones sprayed bullets toward them. Holy... Against this onslaught of lead, two squishy humans like them were completely outmatched. Wait a minute. You're some kind of god, aren't you? Can't you do something? Just using my power will... Uh, powers really nearly ain't such a good idea, Captain. Why not? It's really hard to explain when a mechanized drone of death is raining down bullets on my head, okay? Shit. Oh, I think this is bad end. I think I should have just did the other thing. Shields pounded the console in rage at this. They were going to be turned into mincemeat. Isn't there something you can do? Uh, I can manage this much. Pod reached into her cleavage and pulled out a small pistol. Whether she had materialized the gun using her powers or had merely been packing heat between her boobs all this time, he had no idea. I don't even know! I, I mean, they're pretty big, but I'm not sure if they can hide a I don't know, it depends on how big the pistol is. Uh, 
He took the pistol, a handgun was obviously not going to even scratch the drone's armor, but it was something. Now armed, he surveyed the room for tactical advantages. The service gate where he had entered the room behind them, they could use it to retreat. He also noticed canisters of liquid site stored in the opposite end of the room. He could somehow get to those. Fight the drone in the room and escape back to the service tunnel. Oh no! Oh no! What? Ah, uh, this is a new option! I'm gonna fucking die! Oh no! No! Oh god! Um. Fight, escape, fight, escape. <laughs> ah! I mean. I mean. Last time I tried to fight the drone, I died! Uh, but. Hey, we're gonna try to get the bad ending, so let's try to fight the drone, I guess. God damn it, cuz. There's August Sight in the room, he said, so if he can blow it up. I mean, did I try that last time? I don't know. Let's just fight the drone and get bad in. A uh, plan formulated in his mind. Stay here. He waited until the minigun on the drone began to glow bright red and then rolled out from behind the control to generate uh, to a generator. As he predicted, the drone momentarily paused, let its gun barrel cool off, allowing him to aim safely behind the generator while it began to spew out iron again. Come here, you piece of junk! He popped out from behind cover and taunted the drone closer into the room by sparking it with some small arm fire. He planned the drone's unwilling. Um, he as he planned, the drone's un. Wieldly legs got caught between the crisscross of consoles and generators as they closed in on it. Shields used the opportunity to run across the room onto an elevated catwalk out of the firing arc of the minigun. Clock, uh, Claude, throw the August like canister onto the drone! Uh, okay? Claude scrambled from cover now that the drone jammed uh, between heavy equipment and reached the storage rack. Just as she grabbed the first canister, the drone retracted its wheels all into its legs and then suddenly stepped over the obstacles in the room by walking around it like a spider. Shit! Shield stuck down as the drone spun around, sparks sprayed around him as the drone somehow. Uh, the drone showered him. Wow, my bad. So much for that idea. He crawled away, the catwalk using his elevated position to keep himself protected against the drone's assault. Suddenly a red canister hit the drone squarely on its control tower, making it spin its gun barrels away from him toward its new assailant. Take that! Uh, oh! Uh, Claude realized she was standing in front of enough augusite to light a bonfire the size of a tree just as the drone uh, prepared to gun her down. Fuck! Ah, shield drew his pistol. He would only get one shot at this. His lips cracked into a smile when his shot penetrated the canister of August Light, now sitting directly under the drone, imploding its softly armored underbelly with its with a bright explosion. The drone partially collapsed as it suddenly suffered catastrophic system damage. Claude, one more! Okay! She tossed another canister toward the drone. Shield shot it in mid-air, forming an enormous aqua blue explosion directly next to its head. The drone finally lost power. Go oh, hey, it's the success music! We did it! Just the two of us! Oh, yeah! Oh, God! I thought we were gonna die! Uh, the drone finally lost power going limp while it spewed uh, across multiple consoles and generators like an enamored beast, uh, beached octopus. Or enormous. Oh, yeah, enormous, my bad. Uh, Shields exhaled loudly as he dropped the pistol to the catwalk. He couldn't believe the two of them had downed a hunter drone using a pistol and some augusite. <laughs> they ran to each other and laughed as they embraced each other in relief. We, we did it, Captain! Yeah, we took that sucker down! All of a sudden, he realized what he was doing. <clears throat> uh, he awkwardly took his arms off Claude. Come on, let's get out of here before the repair crew shows up. 53 hours before the Liberation Day Massacre. 27 something before Chigar answers the mind stream. Ugh. 
Shields had enough of this nightmare situation. It, is this the same? Yeah, it is. Okay, they found a car waiting for them beside the Phoenix Maintenance Bay. I'm back, and looks like Lux on our side. You saw what happened, right? Chigar has just been admitted to the sick bay. It'll be a piece of cake to take her in while she's sleeping for the night. Shields remembered what. So that was a good option. We didn't die. What? I, I didn't know there'd be multiple options that are right. I thought it was only going to be one right option, and then the rest will lead you to death. What? Anyways, goddammit, Shields remembered what Akari was talking about during the Battle of Liberty's shoulder maneuvering valve attraction. This is the same. Okay, no, it's not. Uh, sending it into an uncontrollable spin while Chigara was, wasn't injured. It's past. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. While Chigara wasn't injured, his past self had sent her to sickbay to be on the safe side. The only problem is that Akari thinks I just saw all that happen from the bridge, thanks to my prior explanation getting cut off by battle. Alright, but I couldn't finish explaining the mission to you because of the interruption. The real situation is actually more complicated. I'm actually not the only Kato Shields in this universe. My old self is still acting as captain of the ship right now, and he is convincing himself that Chigara is his most trusted partner. Honestly, if I were to... Uh, if I were the captain right now, I would have already detained Shigara myself. But the reality is that I can't afford to blow my cover, or else the other Kato Shields will most likely throw me into the brig. Ah! By the way, there's another Claude Trillio in this universe too, tending to Jagara in the sick bay right now. What? Well, isn't it obvious? My old self exists in this timeline as well, piloting the Bianca and serving as the ship's lonely doctor. She wouldn't just disappear because I time warped here. Oh, you're making my head hurt here. You mean the captain who just commanded me in battle and the Claude I fought alongside with is just a moment ago, weren't you guys? That's the situation, yeah. This job just keeps getting weirder and weirder. This might honestly be a new record on my bizarrest shit list. Now you understand why secrecy is key? We also have another problem. We can't just kidnap Chigar and expect the battle tomorrow to play out the same way it did in my timeline. In fact, I haven't told you why Chigar enters the prototype mindstream yet. Well, isn't it because she's actually a spy? No, I think Chigar isn't even aware herself that she'll be used as a pawn in the prototype's plan. The pack forces under Fontana's command, scheduled to reinforce the Combine fleet tomorrow, actually have been sabotaged by the prototypes. There's a Trojan virus embedded deep in their systems, which will allow the prototypes to hijack control of the ships using their hyper brainwaves. Chigar will enter the prototype's mindstream, attempting to disrupt their control over Fontana's ships. However, during that time, the leader of the prototypes will embed herself into Chigar's mind, allowing her to assume control of Chigar during the award ceremony, even after she's defeated. I honestly don't know the details of how the prototype's mindstream work, but... Is this the same? No, it's not. <laughs> I, I felt like it was, for some reason, the prototype's mindstream work, but... From what I've heard from Lin, their bodies can be controlled by their leaders at any time, although the prototypes being controlled can resist to a certain degree as well, with the strong enough force of will. The problem is that if Chigar doesn't enter the mindstream, then we'll all die tomorrow when the prototypes assume command of all Fontana ships. Unless, if we were to somehow send an encrypted transmission to Fontana now warning him of the Trojan, then he could potentially start devising a countermeasure right now. At the very least, he could pull his forces back so that the prototypes can't use his ships against us. There's an encrypted FTL communicator in my office. I could use that. All right, Cap. Uh, all right, Captain Shigar, so she doesn't enter the mine street in about 14 hours, sending encrypted FTL message to Fontana warning him about the virus and avoid detection by the other Kato Shields. On top of all that, we've got to figure out a way to make sure nobody notices Shigar is gone missing until at least the battles begins. Um, no doubt the other Kato Shields will launch a search as soon as he discovers that Shigar has vanished off the face of the ship. You have to make that risk and you kind of raise a body double, okay! 
Time for more bad decisions. This, this has to be a bad option. This has to be. If it fucking isn't, I don't understand how this works. <laughs> There is a certain body double sitting in the brig right now. It looks like that. Oh boy, this is gonna. This this has to end badly. If this doesn't end badly, then I am so confused. Uh, boom. Uh, we can put Lin under and then swap her body with Chigara in the sick bay. Unless someone were to take a really close look, nobody would be able to tell the difference until Lin wakes up. Understood. Okay, so here's the plan. Claude is going to go down to the brig and pretend she's this timeline's doctor. She'll convince the guards that Lynn has contracted a nasty case of sarin measles and needs immediate medical attention. She'll then cart the segregated Lynn to deck zero, handcuffed to a medical trolley. Meanwhile, I'll go into the sick bay and distract this timeline's Claude. I'm sure it'll be a piece of cake. Ikari will wait outside the sick bay until Claude arrives with Lin. While I'm distracting the other Claude, Ikari will sneak in and swap Chigara with Lin. Once you've grabbed Chigara, fall back to the crew quarter 8, which is currently unoccupied. Secure Chigara there and wait for me to arrive. Yeah, see, this time, this time, I'm not on camera. So, no matter what the fuck happens, Nobody should bust in the room. This 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 makes more sense. Nobody should bust in the room because 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 nobody can see me. <laughs> nobody saw me on camera, so there's no proof that there's another case of a clown running around. You know what I mean? So this time we should be all set. Maybe. I mean, this is working for some reason. So technically. What end am I going to get with this? Uh, God damn it. Ikari will wait outside the sick bay until... So that means we won't need Claude's holo because if I'm not on camera, then Ava and the others won't be able to come because they won't know I'm on the ship. Therefore, I won't need to convince Ava about the plan. So... Will I need Claude's holo this time? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, we're trying all the other options. If that becomes an option, then yes, I won't take the holo this time. Because I want to see. Because, like, we shouldn't need it. Because we don't need to convince Ava. Yes, you find out that Claude's playing you. But at the same time, the only real purpose I think it had was to show Ava that, yes, we're good. So let me go. Anyways, Akari will wait outside the sickbay until Claude arrives with Lin. While I'm distracting the other Claude, Akari will sneak in and swap Chigara with Lin. Once you grab Chigara, fall back to crew quarters eight, which is currently unoccupied. Secure so Chigara get there and wait for me to arrive. I'll try to beat a hasty retreat as soon as I can. Once we've regrouped, Claude will use the floor access hatch to relocate Chigar to a maintenance room D4. While Akari runs through the mess hall and calls the other Kato shields out on the comm, then I'll use that chance to sneak into my office and send Fontana to encrypt the call. Did you get all that? Understood, Captain. Let's roll. Alright, good luck. Claude crashed into the brig with a medical trolley, startling the guards. We've got a medical emergency! What? Is something the matter, Doctor? It looks like our prototype prisoners contracted a severe case of the sarin measles. We've got to get her to the sick bay on the double before she becomes contagious. We weren't informed of... Well, looky here. This is an emergency. Do you think we have the time to file paperwork for that? Claude loomed over the security guard. Do you even know what catching the sarin measles is like, Surgeon? First, you suddenly lose bowel control. You'll be experiencing the most explosive, uncontrollable diarrhea of your life for three days, but that's not even the worst of it. From the third day on, hives will break out all over your body. Pus and blood will leak slowly out of everywhere. If left untreated, you'll suffer uh, permanent muscle damage and ultimately death. Shit, the doctor's right. My niece nearly died four years ago of the same thing. Oh, really? That's some nasty ass shit. Are you sure you want to keep that prototype here, Sarge? All right. All right. You've made your point, doctor. Get her quarantined into the sick bay. Roger. Claude approached Lynn in her cell. Looks like you'll be coming with me. I'm afraid you've contracted a very, very serious virus. What? I don't feel... That's what you, that's what they all say, but in a few hours, you'll be pa painting the walls. <laughs> God damn it. But in a few hours, you'll be painting the 
walls with your ass. God fucking damn it, Quad! You'll be thanking me for this later. I'll just sedate you a bit. What? Fool! I didn't... Oh boy, Quad pushed a few buttons on their cells, controls releasing a sleep gas into... Um... The cell, Lynn's eyes lost focus and she dropped down to the floor unconscious. The bridge security staff Lynn um the brig security staff secured Lynn on top of the medical trolley, handcuffing her to the rails. Claude carted her off with a smile. Nobody asks any questions when explosive diary is involved. I mean yeah, the pus and blood was also disgusting, but hey, explosive diary ain't fun, I guess. Fucking hell, that just sounds horrible. Oh boy, sixteen hours so she enters the mind stream. Shields enter the sick bay is the same. It is. Okay, so this time we're gonna not steal her holo and see if that has any major because it shouldn't because Ayla doesn't know that I'm here so therefore we should be fine without it right right or is the gang gonna pull some bullshit and they're still just I don't know we'll see uh I better not take any risk Claude's still a time traveler so who knows the full extent of her powers I mean that is true too even though it works but that is true all right doctor thanks for the chat I feel a lot better now. Is this the same? No, it's not. I should have back to work. I, uh, see you around. At any time, Captain. Let me open the cover. No need. Looks like you have a work, work to do in your office. Shields opened the sliding door to himself and left Claude in her office, closing the door behind him. As he walked out, he confirmed their operation was a success. He marched out of the sick bay with a mischievous grin plastered all of, all of his face. All over his face, you mean? Uh, Shields knocked on the obstinately occupied crew quarters while the coast was clear. He tapped the intercom and whispered, It's me, open up. The door opened and Shields slipped inside. Oh boy. You're back! As you can see, the plan was went exactly as planned. He saw Chigar tied up to the chair still unconscious from the sedation. I swear to God, the guards bust in here, I'm gonna have a fucking shit riot. Anyways, I hope my other self treated you... I hope my other self treated you alright. <laughs> uh, yeah, she did. Okay, now that we've regrouped, let's move on to phase two. We need to contact Fontana on the FTL comm. Let's get moving. Ahem, <clears throat> actually, there's something else I need to talk about first. There's something about time traveling I haven't mentioned yet. Uh-oh, I don't like the sound of this. Ahem. <clears throat> Unfortunately, time travel is nowhere as flexible as one would expect, or I would use my powers more often. The main limitation of time travel is that when individuals and events get moved out of sequence in the timeline, a time paradox can occur. A time paradox? I've heard those words before. Yep, from Sola. Slow down, Sola. This is the same. Oh, I guess it's not. I guess they don't count it as the same. Slow down, so I'm not quite following. Why does you being here mean the universe is doomed? A time paradox. If the mislocation of an event in the timeline breaks the link of causality between a series of events, then the logical sequence of the entire chain of events will be broken. Such a time paradox can potentially cause the entire space-time continuum to collapse, meaning the effective end of the entire universe. Wait a minute, you mean the kind of time paradox which can destroy our entire universe? <laughs> uh, looks like you finally discovered the hard part of this mission. It's pretty complicated to explain, but the skinny of it is, basically, if we were to succeed in this mission and thwart the Liberation Day Massacre, both this universe and the past universe where we come from will collapse and cease to exist. So she tells us this regardless. So we didn't really need her holo for her to tell us this. I mean, like I said, I guess the only reason you really need her holo is to convince Ava if you go out on cam like a dumbass. So it's like, because Claude tells us this regardless. I mean, yeah, you don't find out she's been spying, but that's like baby details that doesn't matter at this point. Like, the whole universe collapsing is more important at this moment. So it's like, yeah, you don't really need the holo unless you went out on cam to convince Ava. So, yeah, I guess that was fine. Damn. Anyways, um... Cease to exist, yeah. As it turns out, the space-time continuum is really sensitive to time paradoxes and resolves them quite forcefully. 
collapse? You mean we'll all die anyways, even if we win? Then what the hell's the point of any of this? Well, you're thinking like a human. No, you will simply be wiped from existence. Dying is a natural phenomenon which must inevitably happen to all life forms, but is an entirely different concept from never existing at all. You traveled here from a future which Liberation Day Massacre cured in order to prevent it, but if you succeed in your mission, the Kato Shields who travel back in time would cease to exist, as the massacre now never takes place. So then, who would be the man who stopped the massacre? A true logical conundrum. In other words, a time paradox. So then, is this, uh, <clears throat> so then is the future really impossible to change? The future can be changed, but why I brought you, that's why I brought you here. At the end of this journey, you must make a choice. Either you stop the Liberation Day Massacre from occurring and avert the tragedy which befalls upon everyone and destroy this universe and the universe you came from, and replace it, them with a new universe you create from your decision, or you let the massacre occur, accept the tragedy, and then this universe will remain untouched. And the concept with your timeline, the universe will know, uh, the universe you know will continue to exist for the better or worse. You're telling me if I go through this, everyone I know will vanish from the face of the universe, but then a new universe with copies of those same people will be created. That's the gist of it, yes, and that is the reason why I brought you here. The key here is that the law of causality does everything in its power to resolve time paradoxes, and it does that by deleting the universe where the paradox occurs, and then creating a new universe which can then logically continue to exist from that point on. In this case, you and everyone in this universe, as well as everyone in the universe where the massacre occurred, would be wiped from existence, thus simulating the time paradox. But then a new universe where the massacre never occurred would be born, and everyone would still exist in that universe, completely oblivious to the fact that a massacre even occurred, or that was, or that there was ever a desperate mission to prevent it. Then we can still save everyone by creating a new universe where the massacre isn't prevented, but simply never existed at all. Ah, now you're understanding how this all works. <laughs> Ah, uh, this time travel stuff's still hard to understand. But, if this mission's a success, we'll have to destroy the universe where the massacre occurs, and head down a different universe where the massacre simply never existed at all. Basically. In this circumstance, I intentionally sought to create a time paradox in order to manipulate the law of causality into destroying the universe you don't want, and into creating the one you do want. Well, it was pretty drastic, but it's not like there's anyone out there who can stop me, so... <laughs> it's pretty convenient, this little quirk of, uh, quirk that the law of causality has. I've been using it to create and destroy universes for... Ah, uh, I forgot. I'm immortal. Who knows how long I've been doing this. Anyways, now that your choices have been laid out in front of you, I want you to choose Kato Shields, Hero of the Galaxy. That's the entire reason I brought you here. Oh, this is so I can watch you, so I can watch you more. I want to watch you run around, fighting desperately against the impossible odds. I want to see the tears in your eyes when you fail, the euphoria cursing through your brains when you are victorious. The bigger the stakes, the more torture your dilemmas, the mightier your enemies, the more I want to see you fight, because it brings me so much pleasure seeing you in action. Hello? Claude's entire body flushed red as she squirmed her legs, oh boy. I think I might have come a little. Claude, you bastard! She's toying with me, just like always! Come to think of it, was there ever a moment she wasn't playing me like a fiddle during this whole time I've known her? Ah. Ah, well, this is still the same. Ah, we're in this too deep now. Oh, let's make our little save. I mean... I mean, who being your plate thing? We're in this deep deep now, we have to keep working together. I don't know what to choose. Uh, 
I want to do opposite answers, but at the same time, we've gotten so far that I want to see where this heads. So I kind of want to stick with my same option that I know is safe, but at the same time, I'm kind of curious. I want to see where this goes. Let's just keep it the same from this point on to see if everything rolls out the same or if I get some weird new ending like locked in the break. Anyways, <laughs> good call. Captain, I knew I could count on you. Plus, I want to save the universe, so it's like, I guess that would be having the team up with Claude. I don't know. Ah, uh, my, it's too bad. You have a once in a lifetime chance to change the future. Isn't Claude such a generous god? <laughs> Ah, but before you get excited, isn't this the same shit? Oh, it is! I could have skipped all that! Uh, oh, the truth is you're a prototype cigar. Oh shit, yeah, the guards didn't bust in this time! Hell yeah! Continuation! Uh -huh. Claude's initial report turned out to be incorrect. She did some more tests and found, without a doubt, you're an artificial clone. No way! Don't worry, I'm s I'll still make sure you're not harmed, but you have to stay put for a while until the rest of the prototypes are defeated. You could be mind-controlled by their leader at any time, so this is for everyone's safety. Oh, I'm sorry, Chigara, but fuck. Ugh. But this means I won't be able to start a bakery with Kato. I won't be able to have children. I mean, why can't you have children? I mean, I mean, no one says we can't do this. You just have to wait until this is all, you know, calmed down. Uh, no. Oh, whoa, 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 what is, what is, what is, what is, what is this? Chigar is, oh, Chigar is a normal girl. 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 Chigar? Shield's tense with apprehension. He knew this was going to be difficult to explain, but he had to make sure Chigara understood the situation. Suddenly, Chigara broke out into a scream. Ah, my! She fell unconscious quickly as she entered her fit of frenzy. She then snapped awake, except this time she was different. You did well to see through my plot shields. He stood in shock. Chigara had just been body Jack. This was now the prototype leader he was talking to. Y you're... But don't think I didn't have a backup plan of my own. Oh, I'm sorry? Ah! Uh, the lights inside the room shut off, or more accurately, every single light inside the ship deactivated. Shields heard a familiar soft drowning of the ship's engine spur out. With- Oh yeah, that's right, she had a bomb implanted to the- Fuck! Oh god, uh, I just remembered that shit! She had a thing that could shut down the whole ship! Fuck! Ah, oh, shield turned the familiar sound of the, yeah, with nothing running an eerily silent toll of the ship. Then the sound of a laser cutter and the clatter of plastic hitting the ground as Shigara's chair split in half, shattered in silence. I can't see a damn thing! I know my holo! Shields pulled his holo out and put it on maximum illumination, casting a weak light over the room. Long shadows surrounded him, filling his heart with dread. Uh, he confirmed that Akari was safe. However, Chagar was now nowhere to be found. All that remained were the broken fragments of the chair and cut rope on the floor. A handheld laser cutter, roughly the size of a cigarette, continued to buzz on the floor until Shields picked it up and shut it off. Did you see which direction she took off? Negative, it was pitch black and the sound of the cutter covered up all her movements. We've been had. Shit, I made a mistake. I should have known that Chigara would have body, uh, could be body jacked at any time. That's exactly what Lin told me when we escaped on the light pot together. All this talk about preventing her from entering the mine stream confused me into thinking we'd be safe as long as we got her before then. Yeah, I kind of thought that at the same time because she was controlled by Lin during the battle and she stabbed me. So I kind of thought like, well not Lin, by uh, fucking Alice and I was like, wait, but you didn't enter the mine stream. How the fuck? I I'm so confused. But yeah, I guess if put under enough stress, she can lose her control. I don't know. Um... All I saw about preventing her from entering the mine scene confused me into thinking we'd be safe as long as we got her before then. No, the reason why we have to prevent Chagara from entering the mine stream is to prevent the prototype leader from bodyjacking her after the leader is dead. 
Shigara can be body snatched whenever the prototypes want their want while their leader's still alive. Wait a minute. Shields looked around and realized that Claude was nowhere to be found as well. Claude! Did Shigara get her? No way. Shigara isn't powerful enough to take Quad on. Even while under the control of the, uh, the prototypes, then Claude must have vanished of her own will. Damn it. Now that she's explained all the rules of the game, she expects me to figure out the rest of my own, huh? She's probably still watching me, eagerly waiting for my next plan of action. Claude's gone! Where'd she vanish to? And now we have a new huge problem. The prototype leader laid out this trap for us, and we just stepped right into it. The Sunrider's main reactor has been remotely shut off. Without it, we won't be able to get an FTL transmission to, uh, sent to Fontana. Even worse, we're essentially sitting ducks with a loyalist pack fleet now. Even unless we can get power restored ASAP, the ship's going to be destroyed. I can't believe we were fooled so easily. If I can get to engineering, I might be able to restore the ship's power. It's a long shot, but... Maybe I can undo whatever the prototypes have done to our systems. But wait, Sunrider also has an emergency FTL transmitter which operates on a separate battery pack. It's all the way down in Deck 2, Section 37, but if we get to it, we could send a message to Fontana even without power. Boy, Section 37 is too far from here. Here's what we should do. I can probably figure out what Chigar has done to our main reactor. I'm going to run to the engineering to restore power. Oh no, I didn't mean to hit the scroll. Oh, there we go. While I'm doing that, you can go to the emergency FTL transmitter and send Fontana the message. Sounds like a plan. Glad to have you on my side, Akari. <laughs> don't worry. I'll get the ship operational again. Oh boy. Well, hopefully. Mm, let's see. Well, it doesn't really matter that she enters the mine tree now. She's been controlled. <laughs> ah, Shields ran into the closet uh, maintenance tunnel and headed down to deck two. Uh, the... Let's see, the backup comms, one of the few systems, uh, one of the few systems which keeps operating under battery power. When the ship loses power like this, basically, when the ship's disabled, we need to be able to breathe and call for help. That's why life support and FTO comm keep working. It's a lot more limited than that regular one, than the regular ones so though. We can only transmit a message with less than 120 characters in length. And the message can only be broadcast on the intergalactic distress uh, rescue channel. Another problem is that the batteries are still nowhere powerful enough to power uh, life support for the entire ship. The air is going to get really thin on deck 2 real fast. All the lifts and trams are offline as well, so I'll be crawling through about 300 meters of maintenance tunnels. After roughly half an hour of climbing down ladders and crawling through maintenance shafts hardly wider than sewage pipes, Shields could begin to see his breath turn into vapor, frost vapors. The air was no longer rich with oxygen, making the trek all the more dangerous. Uh, the outermost sections of the ship were quickly dis. Uh, dissipating heat into space and life support was slowly losing the battle to keep the extremities of the ship fit for human life. The walls were now frozen solid, a thin layer of ice while small icicles hung from pipes running along the wall of the tunnel. Shields had it had spun thanks to the lack of oxygen, which only made numbness in his fingers and toes worse. Shit, I completely forgot how much I hated the cold. I remember I used to complain to Ava every day during the winter about school uniforms. The military uniforms we have now are, of course, from made from thermal wear and can retain body heat much better than wool, but I'd never... Uh, but I'd need something closer to a plug suit to keep myself protected against the elements like this. Finally, Shields arrived at a tiny alcove in the tunnel. With trembling hands, he removed the panel, exposing the controls to the FTL comm. Icicles hung from the comm's cables, while a thin layer of frost caked to the seal casing. God damn it, this thing had better still be working. He pressed the activation button on the comm, showed no signal of life. Shit! What the hell's wrong with this thing? He tried troubleshooting the problem, making sure all the cables were connected. Finally, he came upon a single unplugged cable dangling from the bottom of the case. Unfortunately, the cable was shot. Uh, the cable slot was now 
obstructed by a solid block of ice, making it impossible to plug back in. He tried to force the cable steel rod into the receptor, but the hole was completely filled with ice. Frustration bubbled up inside of him. Who had dropped the ball and left the cable unplugged? Was it a member of the maintenance crew, a malfunctioning repair drone? His head spun thanks to oxygen deprivation, making it impossible to think logically. No, I have to remain focused. Put plug into receptor. That's what you're here to do. Someone accidentally left the cable plug, uh, cable unplugged. I won't be able to turn the comm on without it. But the receptor, receptor is now frozen solid. Shit. Uh. Shields racked his brain for a way to thaw the ice inside the receptor. The plug was hardly larger than a pen. It would take much heat to melt the ice inside, but without a proper tools. Uh, he wasn't thinking properly. He should have come prepared with a blowtorch or something. Hindsight is always 2020. There's only one option. We're going to have to cross the charges on the battery. It'll make the power cables overheat and melt the ice away. Thanks to the oxygen deprivation, his grim realization that they would not last much longer in the cold. Shields immediately unplugged the two power cables and crossed the charges without second thought. As expected, the power connection from the battery of the comm began to emit smoke. The smell of acid burned Shields' nose as the power of the cables suddenly became extremely hot. Oh God! That scared me! <laughs> suddenly sparks flew from the comm as the conduit burst. Shields uncrossed the uh, charges of the panic. On the bright side, the ice was now melted. The receptor. Uh, the ice was now melted from the receptor. That is, if he didn't just blow the comm, he grabbed the cable and successfully plugged it in. Did it work, or did I just melt the only comm we could use to warn Fontana's fleet? He took a brief breath and turned on the comm. He breathed out in relief as it amazingly activated. We're in business! Damn, I can't believe I actually did a thing like that. If Ava were here, she'd probably murder me. But it looks like my luck's still holding. Montana, you better read this message after everything we went through to send it. Um, Shields used the comms keypad to type out the warning to Fontana and relate it. Now all we can do is pray someone on board Fontana's ship is waiting, uh, watching the distress channel. It makes the message seriously, uh, and takes the message seriously enough to relate to Fontana. Shields attacked the wall panel once again, closing the comm. Shields made his agonizingly slow return to the center of the ship. His extremities were now completely numb, and his consciousness faded in and out because of the thin air. The return trip proved to be more difficult than his first expedition. Worse still, since he was heading to Deck 1, he now had to climb up frozen ladders instead of climbing downwards. Shields carried himself, his ragged breasts freezing into vapor clouds in front of him. His knees and hands burned from hours of crawling through the Sunrise's frozen maintenance tunnels. He knew he had to head deeper into the ships quickly before his body gave out on him. He, if he fell unconscious here, he would su surely freeze to death before anyone could find him. Come on, I can't give up. Not when I finally managed to send a message to Fontana. He came upon a ladder roughly 50 meters high. With a deep breath, he cl uh, clambered up, desperately not to lose any more time. His throat burned with each step upward. His fingers were trembling. His feet unexpectedly gave out halfway up the ladder, making him tumble down and banged his other knee on the ladder step. <coughs> Agony shot up his thigh. He began... Uh, he, he begged his arm to hang on to the ladder, but his fingers were now frozen solid. The corners of his vision blacked out as his lungs screamed for more oxygen. The pain finally proved too much to bear. His foot slipped off the frozen ladder. Shields flailed as he fell down the rest of the ladder until he hit the ground flat in his back. Oh god, this is this a bad end? <laughs> uh, he felt as if he had been impaled upon a spike. With a gas, he, ex he expelled a final pitiful breath of air before darkness descended upon him. Did I die? I'm dead, aren't I? He woke up enveloped in warmth. Oh no. <sighs> What's going on? The last thing I remembered is falling off the ladder. Am I dead? One look around revealed, um... 
I don't like this music. <laughs> Something stupid's gonna happen. One look around revealed that he was still in the Sunrise Maintenance Tunnel, so he was most certainly not dead. He groped around his uh, his surroundings. He grabbed a large, squishy mass floating above his head. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what the? Uh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Shields pulled himself up only to receive a face full of class Claude's massive mammies. <laughs> she seemed completely unfussed by his accidental feel, however. Ah, uh, Captain, you're finally awake! Claude was worried that you were about to hit another bad end! <laughs> so do you know about my first? Uh, wait, technically... Oh, no, 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 that was in this one, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, pretty sure, yeah. Uh, uh, Claude, how did you get here? Shields realized he had already knew the answer to that question and decided to replace it with a more helpful one. Uh, I mean, why'd you come here? Well, isn't it obvious? To rescue my poor darling, of course. I can't have you die in such an anticlimactic fashion. And it was my lucky chance to nurse you back to health using nothing more than my body warmth. <laughs> Shield shuddered and checked himself to make sure everything was still as he left it. Claude's here to help, even though the captain thinks I'm nothing but a nuisance. <laughs> Look here, Claude. You vanished up, uh, you vanished on me at a pretty important moment. Just, what are you doing disappearing and reappearing on a whim like that? Can't you at least be a little more helpful? Uh, well... It'd actually be best, uh, for the best if I kept my power usage to a minimum. As I said, the law of causality is quite a forceful man when it comes to treating a naughty time paradox like myself. If I become too noticeable... Yeah, I'm afraid the law will grab poor Claude by the hair and push her down and pound her until she vanishes off the face of the universe. Usually things are all right as long as I don't touch the timeline, uh, the time machine. But the more I flick my secret time button, <laughs> you get my drift, Captain. Shield rubbed his face in frustration. That seemed like a common occurrence whenever he was speaking with Claude. Before he could get uh, off her lap, she wrapped her arms around his face. Your body was almost frozen solid when I found you. Yeah, Claude had to strip off everything and envelop you with my love to restore your HP. It was a long process, but gradually your HP began to fill up with claw, uh, with blood, oh, until it stood on end, about to burst from all the love that this maiden was giving to restore her beloved back to health. It was at this point that the maiden was confronted with a true dilemma. Do I let the HP guy gauge burst and start over from zero, or do I keep it at maximum strength? Ah, it was truly a nightmarish choice. Alright, alright. Shield shuddered at what may have happened while he was unconscious. For the better or worse, his body felt restored to health at least. Whatever Claude had done to him, he felt as if a feather. Uh, he felt as light as a feather, as if he had just woken up from a refreshing sleep. She. She released me? <laughs> like, whoa, 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 what? Uh, thanks for saving me then. Oh, this is quite rare. The captain actually thinking, old Claude? He sighed. I would have died out here if it hadn't come, if you hadn't come, so I guess at, I at least owe you my thanks. <laughs> I could think of a whole lot of other ways you could repay this debt. How about a quickie right here? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and he traced a gratitude vaporized in Shield's mind at Claude's outrageous suggestion. Like we could do it in the middle of a frozen maintenance shaft, you dork! For a chance with you, Captain Claude will move the mountains and create a new create new stars. Ah, I was the fool. Like anything would come out of being grateful to you. Let's just get a move on. Well, I don't appreciate the sudden Sundere act, Captain. Oh boy, uh, aren't we on the Sundere's uh, route? We're 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 getting closer to Claude than we are to Akari. What well, what the fuck's going on here? Uh, is is this the cold hard reality that the game is saying that you'll never get Akari? This was all just a farce because I don't fucking appreciate that. I'm so game. God fucking damn it! This ship's already had plenty of those. 
Do I look like a car? <laughs> Fucking oof! You had to call out my girl as well? Oh, damn, my dude, Kato. Calling out a car like that. Damn! Do I look like a Kari to you? Oh damn. Oh damn. Ah, Lane, you look like you just lost your chance at holding these godly boobs in your palms, Catton. Claude winked as she jiggled her chest. She just finally managed to peel off, uh, peel Claude off and sit himself back up. So are you planning on sticking around this time? Of course, Captain, unless another sticky situation happens where I might be forced to use my powers, of course. Right. Well, uh, I'll try to stay out of trouble then. So, how long was I out? For about an hour. Tch, we better move. We've wasted too much time here. The ship's still without power. We need to head to the engineering and figure out a way to uh, turn the reactor back on. Understood, Captain. Now, uh, t Shall Claude go uppy the ladder first? Uh, no. I'll take point. Follow me. Oh, you and I took the extra effort to wear my special panties for you today. Is that, is that so? Can I? You know? Uh, anyways, you see, that's exactly why I was afraid of. I mean, Kato, you act so high strung, but don't act like you don't want to look. Everyone does. I had to take a sip of water because of that. God damn it, Kato. Now's not the time to fool around, Claude. Let's move. Sa! 47 hours before Liberation Day Massacre. 11 hours till Trigar enters the mind stream. Oh boy. Let me get some more water. I, I am quite the thirsty. Oh boy, that's some good water. Fucking hell. Anyways, um... I haven't even had breakfast or anything, so my energy is dying with all this excitement. After what seemed like an eternity, the pair finally returned to the ship's core. They sighed in relief as the air once again became thick with oxygen. Thick. Anyways, <laughs> with oxygen. And the frost of the tunnels gradually disappeared. Alright, now that we got the message sent, we still need to restore the ship's power. The only way to do that is to head to engineering and figure out just what Chigar has done to the main reactor. Looks like there's no way around revealing ourselves to the crew for this. <laughs> Ma, I guess to be on the safe side, I should stay hidden in the tunnel. I wouldn't want the risk of the crew realizing that the doctor is at two places at once. I'll keep watch and warn if the other cage of shield shows up. Okay, I'll go down there and see. Oh God! Uh, before the shields can finish, the ship shook a ma as a massive explosion bent the hull. Uh, damn! What was that? Oh, the ship's under attack! Shit, this didn't happen in my timeline. We've already altered the course of history by revealing ourselves to the prototype leader before the final battle. Is she now going to use this opportunity to kill us all here? Come on, let's find out what's going on. Shields open the tunnel gate and enter the engineering. Crewmen scrambled as the ship shook. Pipes burst throughout the room, spewing clouds of vapor without any power. The ship was both toothless and blind. Shit, I should have seen this coming. Of course the prototype would have exploit an opportunity like this to sink the ship. Shields ran to the reactor controls and found Akari furiously pounding away on the console. Akari, what's the situation? There you are! Did you manage to send a message? Yeah, how are things going on this end? I've been trying to hack through the logic bomb Shigar set up for us the last few hours. Luckily, I think I found a weakness. The ship took another hit, knocking the two of them off their feet. Damn it! Shield screamed to a crewman. What's the situation? Sir, Crow's Nest reports that the pack fleet has advanced on our position. The Combine fleet is trying to hold back, uh, hold pack back, but they're getting decimated by new enemy rider unlike anything we've ever seen before oh boy the nightmare send it new enemy rider shit that can only mean shields vividly remembered the terrifying yeah this is the same i know that but now he had no idea whether fontana's ships were even operational while his own vessel was completely shut down in other words unless he found a way to restore power they were all going to be dead in moments 
Cap, as I was saying, there's a way to turn the reactor back on, but, uh, problem is, you're going to have to go inside the reactor first. Oh boy, I'm already not liking the sound of this. I don't know how, but whoever shut the ship down managed to get his hands on Shigara's command ID. The only two people who have higher access clearance are you and the commander. I've managed to rewire the engineering bay security grid to permit an override. The only problem is the hack requires you to swipe your command ID on the reactor's internal control relay. Why the hell is that inside the reactor? Uh, the console just used for maintenance tasks. When the reactor's been shut off, but basically that's the only console the engineering and preparator of this, this attack didn't have access to. Thanks to that, I was able to open up a back door to regain control over the reactor system through it. D don't worry, you have 20 seconds after you swipe the command ID on the slot before the reactor turns on. Just uh, climb back up once it's done. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my god. Uh, however, the Sunrider took another massive hit, causing a beam to drop down from the ceiling and smash a row of consoles. Shields realized he didn't have any time to complain. God damn it! Uh, he gritted his teeth and pulled himself over the other side of the railing, which blocked the sh off the reactor shaft. In reality, the steel column in front of him was merely the tip of the reactor. Below him, a massive chasm actually housed the majority of the Sunrider's fusion reactor, which was shaped like an enormous Spewing, uh, enormous spouting onion. He jumped off the ledge onto a ladder leading down to the reactor bulb like a bottom. Just as he grabbed onto the ladder, the ship took another hit. Oh, shit, oh shit! He lost his footing and hung on to the ladder for dear life as his legs fell below him. <sighs> he managed to regain his balance. Um, he managed to regain his balance amidst the, cur the curses. Worst day ever! He climbed down and spun the steel wheel, which opened the reactor's gate. However, next to the thing he saw, he entered the reactor, his jaw dropped. An enormous cavern of steel surrounded by all sides by enormous spires. Where the hell is the console? He scanned the spherical drone for anything resembling a workstation to no avail. Finally, he gave up and poked his head back outside. Ikari, where the hell's the console? Ikari looked down and hollered back. Huh? It should be right there. It's just a steel juggle in here. I don't know what's... What? Uh, oh, for the love of... Aren't you the ship's captain? Captain, not engineer. Uh, Ikari nearly fell down the chasm herself when another enormous explosion shook the ship. Shields heard screaming and the crashing of steel beams above him. What just happened? Nothing! Half the engineering just collapsed, that's all! Look for- uh, look for two red stripes! The console will be between them! Two red stripes, got it! Uh, Shields re-entered the reactor core, desperately looked around for the red stripes. Red stripes, red stripes. Here it is, I see it! He ran across the core as the entire ship rattled. Shields swiped the command ID located on the cuff of his wrist against the console reader. The console screen came to life and displayed various dips beyond Shield's comprehension. However, he understood clearly what the countdown to the timer meant. From 20. What from 20 meant. I think that means I have to haul ass out of here! The reactor began to hum back to life. Sparks began to fly from the top of the spires as Shield sprinted across the core. Ah! Suddenly, the entire spherical interior began to revolve around the middle circlet. Why, where the exit bored through. What in the... Shield sprint suddenly became futile as the entire room began to revolve. Suddenly, opposite directions of where he was running. Go wrong way! Shield turned around and ran the other direction. The gate uh, fast approached him as the revolving floor now added to his speed. He had to jump exactly at the right time and grab onto the exit passage. Ugh! He jumped and grabbed onto the ledge of the gate as the entire of the reactor core revolved around him. The sparks of energy at the tip of the spires began to glow brighter and brighter. With the last of his strength, he heaved himself through the gate and clambered onto the ladder, shutting the gate behind him and spinning the whole wheel. Uh, yeah, spinning the wheel as quickly as he could muster. Just as the gate locked, the ship hummed back to life. Power's back! 
He hummed the, he heard the satisfying thump. As I say thump, my dog thumps down. I was like, the fuck? Ah! He heard the satisfying thumping of the Sunrider's AA guns as they woke from the slumber. Grinning with triumph, Shields climbed up the ladder and grabbed onto Akari's hand. Ha <laughs> ha! You did it! Overcome with joy, Akari and Shields embrace. Shields suddenly realized what he was doing and pulled himself off the mercenary. Oh, um, yeah! Good job with the fix, Akari. Y you too, Captain. What? It's not like I hugged you. Uh, it's not like I hugged you because I like you or anything. I was just relieved, that's all. <laughs> the celebration was abruptly cut short when the squad of Marines suddenly burst into engineering. Oh. What the? To their dismay, a wall of rifles formed in front of the group. Freeze! Oh, God. Shit, I was afraid of this. Shields looked around desperately for an escape route. Uh, incidentally, he realized that Claude had once again vanished into thin air. Not that her vanishing act was ever a surprise. She wasn't even there, wasn't she? Oh boy. Just then, Jagara appeared beside another cage of shit. Fuck. Ah, great. So there is the reason why my other self thinks I'm the one who sabotaged the reactor. That's the one, Captain. The, he's the prototype. There's no doubt about it. He kidnapped me and forced me to shut the ship's reactors down. It was all a plot to render the defenseless... Uh, us defenses so Pack could launch their surprise attack. You see, there's no reason for you guys to get caught up in this too. Just let security take the imposters. In fact, you all need to sorte now and defend the ship. Uh, come on, myself! Don't just lap uh, Chigara's words so easily without a second thought. Kari! Oh, uh, wow! Well, <laughs> say something! While the other shield's attention was diverted, Chigara... No, Chigara's body sneered at him. <laughs> oh god, Chigara's still under prototypes. I was gonna say potato. <laughs> I was literally about to say potato control. <laughs> Fucking hell, prototypes control. Shit. Everything's still going according to their plan. Marines approach rifles drawn. Do I make a break for it while I still can? Shit, but if we hide inside the ship, it's only a matter of time until the other shields captures me again. And now that we bungled our first kidnapping attempt, there's no way I'm going to be able to capture Jagar again be uh, before she sorte uh, sorties the final battle. I could try escaping the ship with Kakari on her rider and hatch a new plan to impasticate Jagar after battle, but before the massacre... Just said another familiar- oh fuck. <laughs> Face of fear. Captain, the Nightmare Ascendant is coming back for another pass. And I've got even worse news. What could be worse than this? Minister Fratera just contacted us. He discovered a Trojan embedded in the ship's system ships. If he enters battle now, the prototypes will assume control of his fleet using the quantum brainwaves and this uh, decisive moment of our battle plan. His best minds are working to remove the virus, but he cannot sure that his ships will be ready in the meantime. Meaning, we must assume that the Allied Pack fleet will be un uh, unable to assist us in the coming battle. <sighs> well, it looks like my message got through at least, but the message still came too late for Fontana to devise a countermeasure. What are our options? Captain, I believe I know a way to defeat the virus. I can use the little race calm dishes to directly enter the prototype's mainstream. While they're emitting brainwaves, I'll cause so much interference that their thoughts uh interference in their thoughts that they'll be unable to control the Allied ships. Can you really do that, Chigara? Yes, you have to trust me, Captain. Captain, proceeding with this plan with full knowledge that the Allied pack ships have been sabotaged places the Combine fleet in grave danger. If our chief engineer is unable to disrupt prototype brainwaves, then our total destruction is all but guaranteed. No, Chigara can do it. We'll just have to trust her. Are you fucking- Ah! Despite every damn thing I've done to change the past, my other self is still decides to go down the exact same path as before. I swear to God, if it all ends in bad end, I'm gonna be upset that I went through all this for bad end. <laughs> this is too long for bad end. Frustration bubbled in Shield's veins. Well, Meeson lets its cannon bad end, not short little. Oh, you got shot, bad end. 
Shields, you're making a mistake. It's Shigaru who's the prototype. She's being controlled as we speak right now. If she enters the mine sheen, everything you worked for will be destroyed. Shields glared down Shields. That's enough of your lies, prototype. You guys have been trying to tear this ship apart from the moment Lin set foot in our brig, but your lies have no power here. We're one family on board this ship. We're not going to begin to question each other. That the ties that bind us is something your prototypes, you prototypes will never understand. Nice speech, Captain, but you're the one completely blind to the truth. Marines trained their rifles and shields as he stared at his other self with anguish. Yes, only he could understand his other self was feeling at this moment. The sorrow, the emptiness. The man had lost his entire family, hedged all his bets on his new one, and the bet was about to burn everything else he had left to ash. Shit, we managed to restore power and send Fontana to the, the warning, but... As long as Shigar remains at large, the massacre is still going to happen anyways. Did Akari already figure out a way to stop Shigara? Looks like I'll just have to trust her for now. Oi, so you're telling me that this Kato Shields was just an imposter? But he just helped me restore power to the ship. In fact, if it weren't for him, we'd all be dead now. Uh, none of this adds up, Captain. He did what? You heard her. I just saved the entire ship, but you're not out of the woods yet. Can you... I can still help you. I think he's telling the truth. We should trust him for now. Captain, perhaps the imposter seeks to become an enemy turncoat by working for us. If we turn him into a double agent, we could gain a tactical advantage in the battle. Yeah, but if but if a spy turns traitor once there's if a spy turns traitor once, there's nothing to say he won't turn traitor again. Just then the ship shook as it took another hit. Did you hear that? It's a nightmare ascendant. You're not going to last long against it. I know its systems and its uh, calibrities. You need my help. Tch. Captain, we're out of time. We must return to the bridge. All right, looks like I don't have a choice. Very well, prototype. Let's see if you have any insightful to offer. But, you ha um, but if you try to pull anything, my Marines will gun you down on the spot. All right, take him in, boys. With that, the Marines rushed forward and handcuffed Shields. Akari leaned in and whispered to him, Good luck. I'm taking off on the Phoenix and finishing this. Okay, good luck. The Marines marched Shields to the bridge at gunpoint. I never thought that I'd become a captive on my own bridge. He could tell the battle situation was already tense thanks to the Sunrider losing power. The chronologic... Chronolog... Yeah. Chronology... I can't say the word chronology. The chronology. Fuck it out. Oh, the events he was familiar with had been forever altered. Instead of the Sunrider retaining the battle, re-entering the battle after finishing it, its resupply operation, the Loyalist Pack fleet had advanced and launched an offensive while the ship was powered down. In other words, the timing of events had now moved forward. By now, most of the Sunrider's riders had already sorted within movements. Chigar would likely enter the mine stream to restore Fontana's control of the Allied Pack fleet. This is the pivotal moment. I have to end this now. I won't get another shot at this. He heard Kriska's voice crackle through the cob. Sunrider, the Nightmare Ascendant's coming around for another pass. We've been hitting it with everything we've got, but our weapons are ineffective. Prototype, what do you know about the Nightmare Ascendant? It's an ancient Rubian writer used by a Shar Myron who vanished a millennia ago. Defeating it won't be easy, but if you stuck if you stick it with rough lead, it'll go down like anything else. But be careful, the prototype leader of piling it can also awaken just like Asuka and Sola. Let's see. Uh, the only way we're going to get down this monstrosity is if the entire combine fleet and the Allied Pack fleet hates it with everything that they've got. Chigara, how soon will you begin restore to control Fontana's ships. I can begin any time, Captain. No, wait! If Shigara enters the mine sheen, then you will assume control, uh, you are, uh, then you will assure your own destruction. The prototype leader will transfer her consciousness to Shigara's body and use it to perpetrate the assassination of Admiral Gray and every single Alliance military leader gathered at the victory celebration. Captain, you must consider the risk. Prepare to enter the... 
You motherfucker! Anyways, uh, Captain, Commander, if we don't get Fontana's ships into battle now, then the entire Combine fleet will be lost. Does the prototype have any other ideas on how to win? Come on, there's gotta be some way we can do this. We can win without Fontana. The sunrise shook as it took more hits. In front of them, the Nightmare Ascendant fire drones danced around the Alliance carriers as they carved into, into pieces. The entire carrier burst into a massive fireball, sending a piece of it. Sorry about the guys. Anyways, of its launch platform flying through the gut of the cruiser. A smaller vessel listed sideward, uh, sideward as its fuel tanks lit on fire, burning its crew alive. We have to trust Shigara. I know she's not a prototype. She's one of us. She's our trump card. She can turn this battle around in our favor. That's exactly what the prototypes want you to do. We have to continue without Fontana's fleet and face certain defeat. Captain, the prisoner's words do have merit. The chief engineer of this vessel could easily have embedded the logic bomb which shut down our ship. Further, if she is indeed a prototype spy, then stands the reason that she could be mind controlled as suggested by our prisoner. A sound course of action may be to permit her to enter the mind stream to undo the prototype's control over the Allied forces fleet for now, but then to detain her after the danger has passed. Burning embers glowed inside the other shield's eyes. She isn't a spy! There's no way she could be working for the enemy! It's just like when... I'll... Uh, yeah, I'll damn the entire galaxy if it means protecting Jigara! She... She was there for me when... While you weren't! Sweat dripped down Shield's face as he heard his past self rave in madness. He closed his eyes. Yes, this was the me of the past. A fool. A dangerous fool. Captain, you have become emotionally compromised. You are failing to apprise the situation rationally. I cannot permit you to lead the ship when you are be uh, basing your decision solely on your... ENOUGH! I will not allow you to slander our chief engineer! Commander to think I once called you my friend! Shit, he's completely lost his mind! Just what kind of lies has Jigar been feeding him lately? For all intents and purposes, he's fallen completely under proto uh, prototype. I was gonna say potato again, you heard that! The prototype's control! Uh, there's no hope of ever convincing him now. Just then, he heard Akari's voice on the comm. Uh, I'll think let's go on berserk! Uh, Oi, Captain! W what are we supposed to do? Are we actually gonna shoot her down? Shit, I almost forgot about this event. During the battle, Asuka goes berserk from awakening too many times and tries to kill Chigara. But we can use this to our advantage? No, we can't use it to take Chigara out of the liberty. Asuka's attempt ultimately fails when Ch Claude stops her using Bianca's gravity gun. But Akari could use this opportunity to... Of course, this is our chance to disable the liberty while everyone's distracted by Asuka. I know what's going on. What's wrong with Asuka? Temporarily, instantly due to mental exhaustion, she's been utilizing too many awakenings during battle. At this rate, she's going to kill Jigara in a fit of jealous paranoia. Shh, put me through to the blackjack! Asuka, what's wrong? I'm sorry, Captain, but you're being tricked. I'm doing this for the good of the ship! Chigara is the traitor! The blackjack is on an intercept, cor uh, intercept course for the Liberty. What, even you? Asuka, please listen to me. I don't know what you've been told, but that's only a filthy lie spread by the prototypes to get us to doubt each other. Defend the Liberty. Chigara is our only hope we have to win this battle. No, I can sense it. It's Chigara. It, it, Chigara is definitely, I've got to stop her. The blackjack has cut the channel. Shit. Move in, move in the Phoenix to intercept the blackjack. I'm in charge here. But he's got a point. Asuka's coming in fast. Just do what he says. Copy. Captain, I have a lock on the Blackjack's cockpit. I shall take full responsibility. Every single pair of eyes at the bridge focused on the Blackjack as it sped toward the Liberty. This is it. The decisive moment. I can only maintain a lock 
for four more seconds. Two. Two. Pull the ch Uh. Oh! Just like in Shield's timeline, the Bianca maneuvered in front of the Liberty at the very last second and overpowered, uh, overloaded the gravity gun, forming a massive gravity eddy. What the hell? Caught in the current of the blackjack and spun past Bianca, almost clipping the shoulder guns against the Bianca. Under the massive strain of moving the blackjack, the Bianca's gravity gun exploded in a blossom of blue sparks, causing the entire rider to lose power. It's uh, it rotated powerlessly through space. Ah! What the? God, are you all right? Y yes, Captain. I'm not so sure about the Bianca, though. What are you doing? Now you listen to me and listen good. This is the same thing, though. This is where, I, yeah, especially with Captain Moore, just to say, hey, poor Claude feels. I remember this entire speech. Poor Claude getting gunned down like that. Oh well, I guess she'll be fine. Just then, an entirely different voice intercepted or interrupted Claude's big moment. Sorry, Claude, but I'm gonna have to cut you to the chase here. Phoenix de Cloak now seconds away from reaching the Liberty. What? Phoenix, what are you? Hey, <laughs> sorry about this, Cap, but I decided to side with your other version. Now let's get fut uh, let's now let's get future saved. Phoenix swooped down with its katana, surgically removing the EMC dishes, but leaving all uh, of its other essential systems untouched. What? End of the line, Chigar, or should I say prototype? <laughs> You! The other shields grabbed shields by the scuff of his throat and lifted him off his feet. You planned this! <laughs> How does it feel, bitch? Uh, for a moment, they face off against each other in front of the bridge, their backs illuminated against the main monitor, man to man. Shields gritted his teeth. It's over. Without the MC dishes, Shigara won't be able to enter the mind stream. Now look at Shigara! This is the reality! What? Chigara menacing laughter echoed through the bridge. <laughs> you did it, Shields. Or you did well, Shields. I don't know how you managed to look through time to get me, but I'm guessing that Wanderer had something to do with this. The Nightmare Ascendant appeared beside the Liberty. Captain, new transmission coming from the Ascendant. Put it on screen. <laughs> but it looks like... But it's still too late. Thanks to your chief shutting down your ship, you couldn't get a warning sent to Fontana's fleet in time. You will be dead by my hands long before this ship arrives to save you. The Bochigar and Alice now simultaneously on screen. Everyone could see what their lips that their lips were synced as they spoke together, their voices intermixed. The other shields looked in awe and horror in horrified disbelief. Ch Chigara? What have you done to her? Done? She's been under my control ever since she joined the ship. Everyth um, everything was done so that we could control you. And how easy it was to convince you that this little doll loved you. <laughs> you we had you eating out of the, our hands practically your entire voyage. If the Wanderer hadn't interfered, then I would have... The other shield eyes twitched. Then I've been... All this time, everyone else was right! Open your eyes, shields! I'm you from the future! I've come to warn you about Chigara! I impossible! The other shields held himself against the tactical map. <laughs> if I can spark an intergalactic war, I'll just have to be satisfied with seeing the look on your face when your ship sinks. Oh boy. The Nightmare Ascendant's fire as drone is detached and scream toward the Sunrider. Captain! Uh, I, I know this is a way to cut it, but we're already reaching about two hours here. Well, not really, like an hour and a half, so we're gonna save and come back to this, because Jesus Christ, I didn't expect this to go that long. It's all new content, so it's like, damn. But anyways, um... Thank you all for watching. If you like this, hit the thumbs up button to save your favorites. I'll share with your friends. This is Big Knixis. This is entirely different than what I was expecting, but it's so interesting so far. So thank you all for watching. I love you all. I'll see you all 
and the finale of Akari's story, I guess. Goodbye, everyone.